Hi class, Dr. Jim here. So now this is the third video in the companyization of all those three videos or three lectures that I talked about. And so this one is kind of like the most advanced. This is doing the dye hybrid cross. So if you're able to do the mono hybrid and then also handle the special situations, the dye hybrid is really the last one to kind of master. If you get this one, you're really doing great. And you know, and you have a really good understanding of how to do the genetics. So again, do this one last. If you haven't done this before, you know, this might be a little bit more confusing for you now because we're talking about two traits or two genes rather than just one. And so that's what makes it a little bit more hard and makes it more difficult to kind of understand. So this is the dye hybrid cross, which is again a little bit more complex. I wouldn't say it's harder, but it's just a little more complex in what what to do. Okay? So make sure do this one last. All right, so we're going to show you how to perform the dye hybrid Punnett square. And again, we're talking about two genes now as opposed to just one. So instead of talking about green and yellow, we're talking about green and yellow and tall and short, or green and yellow and smooth and wrinkled, things like that. That's the dye hybrid, and we do this in the lab as well. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show you how to set these up and efficiently get these done the right way. Okay. So in a dye hybrid cross, we're talking about two traits from the parent. And again, color versus height or weight versus eye color, something, you know, whatever the two genes are. We're talking about two separate genes here. Okay. And why we why I separated these out is really because if you don't understand the monohybrid, you're really going to get confused with the dye hybrid. But they kind of work the same way. Again, you have to figure out what the phenotype of the parent is and then get the genotypes. And then once you have both of those, you put them on either side and then you figure it out. Now the difference again between the dye hybrid and the mono hybrid is the dye hybrid talks about two genes. So now in each one of the parents boxes over here on the sides, you're going to have two alleles, okay? Because you're going to have a total of four genes and we're going to look at this, the four genotypes or the four letters and you're going to be able to give two of those letters to each one of your offspring. Okay, and so let's do a problem here and let's see if you can set this up. Okay, maybe you can set it up before you even get a chance. So a pea plant is heter heterozygous green and short and short is mated to a pea plant that is yellow and homozygous dominant. What are the possible offspring and what are the phenotypic ratios of all the offspring? So again, now we're talking about pea plants. So first thing to do is figure out the phenotypes of both these plants. So let's take the first one and get the phenotype. Okay, so we're talking about a heterozygous green. So we know that green is dominant over yellow, okay, because those are the two colors. And that short is now going to be, is actually recessive because if you look down here, homozygous dominant tall, tall is the dominant of that gene. So short is recessive and heterozygous green is that. So we can say, let's look at the phenotypes. The phenotypes would be the green plant and it's short. And we know the genotype because it says heterozygous, so we know it's one big letter, one small letter. And that the short, because this is the, again, the recessive trait, they gotta be two small letters, okay? So now we're talking about two sets of letters here. Big G, little g, and little t, little t. Now let's see if you can do the other parent here with the yellow and homozygous dominant. So we know the phenotype is yellow. Okay, so in that situation, yellow is recessive, remember, because the G or the green is dominant. Yellow is recessive, so that's got to be little g, little g, okay? And homozygous dominant tall. Well, we know tall is dominant, so that's going to be a big T, and we know that this plant is homozygous, meaning that they have to have both big Ts. So the phenotype is going to be yellow and tall, but the genotype is going to be little g, little g for the yellow, and big T, big T for the tall. Okay, so now we can look at, here's our genotypes. We can write those underneath to kind of keep track of them, okay, of our two plants, and then we're going to set them up. This is where most people make the mistake. They can get the genotype, they can get the phenotypes of the parents, but then when they get to the dihybrid cross, they kind of lose all of it as they go along. It's kind of like getting halfway there and then losing your money or losing your keys and you forget how to get to the rest of the way. I'll show you how, what happens and this is the wrong way to do it. So this is the wrong way. So what you see here is four letters and everyone assumes, ah, four letters, I have four boxes. I go G, G, T, T, just like this, okay? I go G, G, T, T. Or, in the, and then the other one, I do G, G, T, T. And ha ha, I'm gonna solve it and get this. 
Well, that's great and all, but how are you going to do these? These just show you the green versus yellow, and these just show you the tall versus the short. These are kind of a mixture, but it really doesn't make sense, and this is also a mixture and really doesn't make sense. And so this doesn't really give you the true answer that we're talking about. You could kind of figure it out maybe by doing it this way, but this is the complete wrong way of doing it, okay? So wrong, don't do it this way. It'll be wrong, okay? The way you want to do it, is by actually looking at the different possible combinations you get. And what do I mean by combinations? And so remember, you can give only one of each gene to your offspring. So in the first situation, we can only give a big G and we can only give a little T. So we have a big G, little T. In the second situation, we can give a little G and a little T, okay? And so we can look at all the different possible combinations. So again, we'll have four possible combinations because again, Give a big G and a little T, and a big G and a little T. And then for the little one, we can give a little G and a little T, and a little G and a little T, and that's our four combinations. For this one, this is even easier. All the combinations are going to be a little G and big T. And that so here goes the one from the plant one, and here are the genotypes for the other ones, the possible combinations, and they go on the side. So you remember how I was saying with the dye hybrid, you have two genes and a total of four alleles and that you do meiosis and you reduce that number. And so here's meiosis, okay? Two alleles for each one, and then when you put them together, you're gonna to get the offspring. And if you look at the offspring, here you go. Now you have four alleles, so meiosis and fertilization. So now you're back to the normal four, okay? Two, two, four. And so that's what makes a dye hybrid a little bit more difficult because you're talking about more letters. I think where most people get screwed up is they can do the genotypes, but then when they try and put the cross together, they screw it up there by putting just one letter in. Remember, each one for the parent is two letters, okay? Okay, so remember that, two letters for each one of the parents. All right, so you do the simple matings, you go across, and then you figure out what are the phenotypes and what are the genotypes of the of the plants. The genotypes are here, these are the letters, and you can look at all the different genotypic ratios, but we're not really concerned so much in dihybrids about genotypic ratios because you'll be counting a lot of different plants. What we typically look at is the phenotypic ratio. Now for a dihybrid, if you remember from the monohybrid, you had two numbers. In the dihybrid, we have four numbers because we have four different varieties. We can have green and tall, we can have green and short, we can have yellow and tall, and yellow and short. So typically you have four different phenotypes for your dye hybrid crosses. So how many are going to be green and tall? Well, let's look and see in our boxes how many are going to be green. We know the big G, little g is a green, okay? Big G, little g is green, 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 and green. So everyone sees how I got that? This represents big G, little g. Big G, little g is green. So we have eight of those. And then we look at what is the second combination. Well, when we have a big T and little t, that represents tall. That's a heterozygous condition. And so this is tall, 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 and tall. So we can draw those out, and we have the green pea plant with the tall pea plant. Okay? So green and tall. That's our phenotypes right there. And we, if you count, we have eight of those. Okay? In the other one, we have little g, little g. And little g, little g represents yellow. That's the color yellow. All right, so we know that these are all yellow, and we now look at what is, are they tall or are they short? So again, we have a big T and a little t, big T, little t, big T, little t, all the way through, they're all big T, little t's. That again represents a heterozygous condition for tall. So we know that these are going to be yellow and tall, so we can put those in, get yellow and tall, and we count how many yellow and talls we have. We have eight. So what is our phenotypic ratio? Remember, there's four numbers associated with it. You can be green and tall. Green and short, yellow and tall, yellow and short, okay? So how many green and tall do we have? Well, I said before we have eight of those, okay? So we have eight green and tall. How many green and short do we have? Well, we don't have any green and shorts on this board, so that would be zero. How many yellow and tall do we have? Well, if you count those up, we actually have eight of those as well, so we have eight yellow and tall. How many yellow and shorts we have? Well, I don't see any shorts on here that are yellow, so that would be zero. And so my phenotypic ratio is going to be eight to zero to eight to zero. Okay? And that's how you do it. Typically, it's four numbers for the dye hybrid. All right? Four numbers. And so here's another problem for you to do in the next, in the next slide. So I want you to do the problem, pause it, 
and then come back and see if you got the correct answer. So here's the problem. John is heterozygous for both brown hair and unattached earlobes. Sue has recessive blonde hair and is homozygous for attached earlobes. And attached means that if they're attached, they're kind of stuck to the side of your head. If they're unattached, they kind of dangle. Mine dangle. So if you kind of want to find out what that means. Okay. So we're talking about brown hair and whether your earlobes are attached to your head or do they dangle. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is figure out the phenotypes for the parents and then the genotypes. So do that and then solve for the problem. Pause here. Okay. Once you've paused, then you can come back and figure out the answer. So you've paused, hopefully you paused and figured this out. If you haven't paused, you can pause now and then do the problem or otherwise you can sit, sit and see how I answer this question. So let's figure out the parents' phenotypes and genotypes. So John is heterozygous for both brown hair and an unattached earlobe. So we know that in both situations, brown hair and unattached are going to be the dominant trait. How do we know this? Because it says heterozygous. When it's heterozygous, Whatever you see is going to be the dominant trait. So we know for both these situations, he's going to be, we can use B for brown hair and U for unattached. So he's going to be big B, little B, and big U, little U, okay? Because he has the big B, little B for heterozygous for brown hair, and he's going to be big U, little U for the unattached earlobes, okay? That's his genotype. So we can put his letters in. And what are the possible combinations? Well, you can be big B, big U. Big B, little u, okay? Little B, big U, and then little B, little u, okay? And so again, you can only have one allele for each one. So you can't have two Bs and you can't have two Us, okay? So one B and one U for each combination. All right, so we got him done. So let's put him up on the board, okay? Here's his combinations. Now let's do Sue. Sue has blonde hair and is homozygous recessive for attached earlobe. So we know blonde is recessive. So in that situation, that's going to be the little b, little b, okay? And also recessive for attached earlobe. So that's going to be little u, little u. So let's do her genotype. Here's her genotype. Little b, little b, and little u, little u. What are her possible combinations? Well, she can give a big b, or sorry, a little b and a little u, or little b and a little u, or a little b and a little u and a little b and a little u. So that's pretty easy. They're all gonna be bu, 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 little b, little u, okay? Put her up on the top. All right, then we carry this through and we solve for what their kids are gonna be. All right, and so you can look at all these different possible combinations, and now what you wanna do is figure out what are the possible offspring. These are all the possible offsprings, and you can draw pictures if you like, or use dots, or however you wanna do it. I just didn't have pictures to put in this time. What are the phenotypic ratios for all the offspring? So now we have to look at the genotype to see what the phenotype is going to be. So let's look at the phenotype of the first box. We see big B, little b. Big B, little b is going to be brown hair, okay, because it's heterozygous. And big U, little u, it's going to be an unattached earlobes because that's heterozygous for unattached. How many of those do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, and four. So we have four brown hair and unattached earlobes. Okay, what about the next situation? We have brown hair, okay, because the big B, little b, but now we have attached earlobes because these are the little u's. So how many brown hair attached earlobes do we have? We have one, two, three, and four. So we have four of those, okay? The next one is the little b and the big u. So in this case, we're going to have blonde hair because it's the little b's. That's a recessive condition. The big u, little u is heterozygous for, again, unattached earlobes. So how many blonde hair unattached do we have? We have one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then finally we have blonde hair and attached earlobes, little b, little u's. Okay, and in that situation how many do we have? One, two, three, and four. So it's all about looking at patterns and finding this out. And So this gets a little bit difficult because you're talking about 16 boxes. So 16 boxes is kind of hard to see. You could shorten this up by just doing one BU box and you get all the same. You get one out of one out of one out of one. Or our condition is four to four to four to four. You can reduce that to one to one to one. So however you want to do it to make it easy, I just draw all 16 boxes so I know I have all the right combinations. But you can see that all these up here are the same for all these. So you could do just one one line of boxes and figure out the same thing. Okay? Whatever's easier for you to use and I'm not going to try and change it up but that's basically the ratio is four to four to four to four or one to one to one to one. 
Okay, and so if you got that answer, you have a really good idea of dihybrid crosses. If you didn't get that answer or are really confused right now, I would like you to go and do some of those practice problems on Blackboard. That's the only way that's going to help you get better and get better at these dihybrid. And I will say dihybrid is much harder just because you're talking about figuring out both the phenotypes and genotypes of the parents and then making sure that you put them correctly. I see it most of the time where people can figure out both the genotypes and phenotypes of the parents, but when they get to the box, they start putting letters in weird combinations and they get all confused at that part. If you can get the genotypes and phenotypes, you've really got a good start. And if you have problems putting the box together and you want some help, please come and ask me about that and I will show you how to do those things. Okay? So that's where I'm going to leave you right now with those things. We're going to summarize real quick, and I showed you basically the dihybrid crosses. This is talking about two genes at a time. And remember, you always have to have the combination. So you always have two letters. You're going to have the one letter for the one trait and the other letter for the other trait. You're never going to have two of the same letters together. Okay. Remember, the phenotypic ratio will always have four number combos. Whether you have something or not, you have to include it. So it would be like in that one situation where we had 8 to 0 to 8 to 0. Okay, that was the different combinations. And like I said, practice, practice, practice. Practice all these different problems. Make sure that you feel comfortable because I want you to get to the test on Friday, next Friday, and you say, wow, I understand how to do these. These are easy. I've got it. I don't have a problem. And you can get through the test. That's the biggest thing. I want you to feel comfortable. I don't want you to feel scared and unsure of because if you don't know how to do these things, you're not going to feel confident in doing these things and you're going to get them wrong on the test. So practice, practice, practice. If you want more problems, I'll be happy to give you more problems during the week and so you can practice these things out. All right. And with that, we've come to the end of the lecture. Hopefully you can get these done and master them by the time that the test rolls around. And like I said, Keep practicing and keep doing keep doing the good things and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.